No matter where on earth you find yourself, clothing plays an important role in keeping you covered, healthy, and protected. Eskimos in the north bundle up to protect from harsh cold and blistering winds. If you live near a desert climate, you cover up not because it's cold, but because the sun rays are so powerful. Believe it or not, one of NASA's satellites has the same problems when dealing with its environment. Just as clothes cover our skin and help protect us from nature's elements, the cold winter wind and scorching summer sun, thermal blankets protect the Hubble satellite from the harsh environment of space. You could say thermal blankets are to spacecraft what clothes are to people. But why would a satellite need clothes? Let's explore a little further. The Hubble satellite orbits Earth at 8 kilometers per second. That means that it fully circles the planet in 97 minutes. It completes about 15 of these circles, or orbits, each day. As the Hubble satellite travels through Earth's shadow, then over to the side lit by the sun and around to the shadow again, the telescope is exposed to both the extreme cold of deep space and the powerful heat of the sun in a fast cycle over and over. The thermal blanket's outer layer changes about 118 degrees Celsius. That's about 245 degrees Fahrenheit every 45 minutes. So the blanket must be able to insulate and protect Hubble's equipment from such extreme temperatures. So how does the Hubble blanket do this? The blanketing material used on the telescope is made up of 16 layers of dimpled aluminum with an outer Teflon skin. The dimples make the aluminum look like this crumpled piece of aluminum foil. See the difference? The dimples give the metal room to contract or get smaller with the cold and expand or get bigger with the heat without cracking the metal. Teflon is highly temperature resistant and is a terrific insulator. That means it doesn't burn up in high temperatures and maintains a consistent temperature on the inside. The thermal blanket does a good job of protecting the onboard instruments against extreme temperature swings. Can you believe it does all that even though it's less than three millimeters thick when laid flat? That's about this thin. Amazing! It's an impressive blanket, but nothing lasts forever. The space environment is hard on materials, so the blanket does need to be repaired from time to time. The wear and tear on the outer layer begins on day one of its orbit. Starting with the second servicing mission in December of 1997, we noticed that the outer layer of the thermal blankets were degrading and cracking at a very fast rate. But instead of taking the precious astronaut time to remove and replace the thermal blankets, we decided to take a different approach. We covered them with what we call new outer blanket layers, or nobles. They're large stainless steel panels that provide the same layer of protection as thermal blankets do. It's just a different way of thermally protecting a spacecraft. Think about it. It's kind of like when you wear a hole in your favorite pair of jeans and then your mom has to put a patch on it. The Hubble has been in space since 1990. That's quite a while for Hubble thermal blanket duty. And over time, the outer Teflon layers started to crack. It's very important to repair and replace the blanket so the Hubble telescope that rides on the satellite can still continue to work, sending great pictures of the universe back to Earth. The NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland houses just the place for such needed repairs. There, a group of upholsters, costume designers, materials experts, and mechanical engineers make up a team of thermal blanket experts. With these types of experts around, this NASA center is the perfect home for the designing and making of the blankets. It's also where the old blankets astronauts have brought back on previous repair missions can be studied. Since the Hubble telescope was launched into orbit, there have already been a few repair missions. The knowledge gained from the thermal blankets that were returned to Earth from those missions helped scientists and engineers develop better blankets for the future. And that new knowledge isn't just for Hubble, it's for a bunch of other future space-based missions too. Sharing information and data is just one of the ways engineers at Goddard are working to make sure future spacecraft last a long time in space. In other words, the work being done at NASA will help the Hubble, as well as other missions, keep doing what they do best, explore the universe. And by the way, don't forget to wear the right clothing when you're exploring our world too. <laughs>